Yes, yes, Mr. President, we can make you a retainer. Hey, Gina, can you come to my office? Yes, doctor. Come in. Hey, doctor. Hey, Gina. How are you? Good. <laughs> hey, the president called today, said he wants a retainer. Have G take an impression, and we'll make the president a retainer. Okay, no problem. Thanks, Gina. Man, I really got the best employees. What the heck? Huh? What? Doc wants you to take impressions, G. Come on, man. Why you can't do it? I do billing. I work in the back office. Well, what about Becky who never bets me? She's out for the day. How about Tim who needs a trim? On vacay. Limpy Lucy? On break. Plus, Doc asks you to do it. So do it. Yo, yo, you good? Hello? Hello? Well, I guess I'm going to have to take the impressions. All right, DAs. So taking impressions is one of the most hardest things to do. However, if you follow the proper steps in taking the impressions, you'll get great results. First step will be choosing your tray size. If you're selecting your tray size, you can be sure that you're going to capture everything you want to capture. The next step will actually be proper alginate mixing. The last step will be taking the impressions itself. Having the proper techniques will lead to a great result. In this video, we'll be covering how to select the tray properly for a patient and things to look for. All right, so what we have here is three different sizes of perforated trays. The most common trays we used in my office is number twos, okay? For all you guys, I'm pretty sure you use your own trays. However, find the tray that you guys use the most in your office. Then, when you go to take your impression, you can start with that tray first if it doesn't fit, whether it's too big or too small, you can adjust the size accordingly. All right, so how we keep our trays organized, we have, as you can see, it's like bins, plastic bins. This might be an idea for you guys to use. Maybe not number them from smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest. However, it really keeps the trays nice and organized instead of having them all together in one location. I'm going to go and show you guys how to go ahead and select a tray, okay? We're going to start with the upper tray. This is Ree, by the way. Hi. <laughs> Grab the tray, and you ask the patient to open really wide. Insert the tray, and sometimes the cheek muscle actually gets in the way of the tray seating down all the way, or going all the way to the back. So what you do is you have the patient close just a little bit, and this allows you to go back even further. Sometimes that may be misleading when you're trying to see what tray fits. So this tray looks fine. You ask the patient, are you okay? Mm -hmm. All right, they say yes. Go ahead and take this out. And we're going to go and select the lower tray. So when you go to select the lower tray, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the patient doesn't have tore eye, which is extra bone in their mouth. As you can see, she doesn't have no tore eye on the bottom or the top. Okay, so you go ahead and take your tray. Open, you have them lift their tongue above the tray. There you go. And you're just making sure that you're catching all the teeth and you are also seeing if it's comfortable for the patient. Is this comfortable? Mm -hmm. All right, once they say yes, you have your tray. If you notice that the tray is not catching the teeth all the way to the back, just select another one. If the tray is maybe too narrow for their arches, whether it be the upper or the lower, you're gonna have to do a custom tray. I'll go ahead and make another video on how to do custom trays, okay? So that will be available to you guys shortly. Well, DAs and YouTubers, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some nice tips and things to look for when selecting a tray for a patient. Look for my next video on how to mix alginate properly and the proper techniques of taking an impression. And as always, keep styling, keep smiling. <laughs>